Hi everyone, we are the comrades, and we're here to present you with our findings from a news article about DoorDash. DoorDash is one of the leading forces in the US online food delivery industry. It issued its IPO in December last year and received an initial valuation of $39 billion. However, its profitability in the post-pandemic era seems to be in question. DoorDash was not the pioneer in the food delivery industry, but it has found its niche through differentiation. It focuses on the glowing suburban areas and used a merchant-first approach. By the end of December, as you can see on the graph, DoorDash has increased its U.S. market share to 52%, surpassing its competitors, namely Uber Eats and GrabHub. However, moving to a post-pandemic era, customer loyalty and business sustainability may become concerning to DoorDash. As it struggles to break even, its financial weakness may also hinder its development on technology. But there are opportunities for DoorDash. Given the increasing popularity of local e-commerce, Daughter should, daughter should fully utilize its first mover advantage in the surveillance to further differentiate itself both vertically and horizontally. So for the first alternative, which is its current practice or its status quo, DoorDash currently uses horizontal and vertical differentiation and has been highly successful despite the pandemic. The company was able to use price differentiation, specifically lowering prices for restaurants when using specific services such as self-delivery or standoff. DoorDash, despite lowering fees, found profitability by penetrating in e-commerce strategies, which was a gap in the market, and creating a platform for restaurants to enter these e-commerce strategies, putting it at a point of leverage. Speaking of DoorDash's strategy of focus on, focusing on the suburbs, the firm initially launched in large cities, but it didn't turn out well due to the price war and the fact that the competitors were more well established. Other challenges include traffic in downtown and high wages expected from drivers. And facing these challenges, DoorDash switched to the suburbs. By doing so, it has differentiated itself horizontally and has gained a reduced level of price competition. On top of that, with many residents leaving urban areas for the suburbs during COVID-19, DoorDash's strategy has proved to be even more successful. Our second alternative would be to implement horizontal differentiation of the product line, specifically focusing on pharmacies such as Shoppers and Rixal, due to their large market share and high physical presence in Canada. DoorDash will only deliver over-the-counter medicines as well as basic necessities, therefore eliminating the need for any kind of prescription permit. Uh, such choice might be validated by a higher than average demand for medicines in the face of the global pandemic, in addition to inability of particular age groups to make such purchases on their own due to high risks of infection. DoorDash will be the first food service company to deliver medical products, thus giving them the first mover advantage. Therefore, if other participants join the market later, DoorDash will already establish cost-efficient ways of delivery operations as well as receive customer recognition by that time. Also, we suggest DoorDash to form an exclusive partnership agreement with Air Miles and PC Optimal programs, thus locking in a specific group of regular users of these loyalty programs and so gaining a competitive advantage over other market entrants. The potential approach DoorDash can take to vertically differentiate itself is by introducing a new feature that would allow the customers to bundle items from multiple restaurants into one order. This will provide for a cost advantage, as now the customers can avoid paying delivery and service fees several times when they order from different locations. It would also give uh, customers a sense, a sense of broader variety when they order, um, thus uh, further leveraging the company's existing focus on uh, offering broad selection of products. However, there are several complications to consider. Uh, for example, there might be a need to reorganize the delivery system to avoid increased delivery times. Also, a decline in revenues for some restaurants might cause them to reconsider their relationship with DoorDash and potentially um, uh, switch to other competitors. And thus, this alternative calls for a more in-depth cost and benefit analysis before potential implementation. So after comparing these three alternatives, we've determined that a careful mix of alternative one and two will be optimal. Firstly, by continuing with their current focus on suburbs, Door DoorDash can relieve themselves of the severe price competition in urban areas while also building a rapport with businesses and consumers in a niche location. They'll also be able to further reap the benefits of their price differentiation while expanding their e-commerce presence. Then with the potential incorporation of pharmacies and their, del their delivery network, DoorDash will further differentiate itself horizontally while expanding their revenue stream. Given that DoorDash would also be the first of its competitors to do this, they can protect their strategy to a certain degree by establishing exclusive partnership agreements with relevant loyalty programs. 
as seen, this strategy will be relatively simple to integrate and sustainable, which cannot necessarily be said for alternative three. Um, and that brings us to the end of our presentation. Thank you for listening, and we'll be happy to answer any questions you may have.